You might recall last summer the UK government recruited a mutant algorithm to predict exam grades. We were told that the algorithm could offer the fairest possible model for assessing students' grades. The outcomes of these decisions caused harm for many students, especially students who were already marginalised because of their race, ethnicity, disability and class. And there were also like many unanswered questions. How did the algorithm estimate students' marks? Do teachers have input? How do we calculate for fairness? This story is one example of how artificial intelligence, AI, has been shown to demonstrate bias when marking students' exams. My name is Louise Hickman. I'm currently based at the London School of Economics and the Ada Lovelace Institute. My research looks at how we might improve AI by using something called disability-led design. This means that my work looks at the space between code and people and all their lived experience. How can disability change the way we write code? To understand this question, I'm going to take you back to the 1970s. We're going to meet a professor of cybernetics, somebody who looks at the communication between machines and living things. His name was Gregory Bateson, and one day he asked his students in his class to consider a blind person walking with their cane. He asked his students, where did the blind person's self begin? The person's brain? their hand, the tip of their cane. But asking these questions, Bateson is drawing attention to the feedback loop between the blind person, their cane and their environment. Who is doing the navigating? The cane, their body, the brain, the grip of the cane or the actual path of travel? In In effect, Bateson debunks the idea that the brain is processing data about the environment, but instead, we are looking at the purpurious feedback loop. It's shaped by the environment, our bodies, and the ideas that we have about our bodies. Algorithm and AI are similar to the blind person's cane. They do not work alone, but they are part of an ever-changing environment. An AI uses code to interpret this reality to us and the way that we can change code according to how we perceive the environment. The question is, who is coding this feedback loop? This is really important for disabled people and how disabled people can help to code this feedback loop. Here... I'm resisting the idea of algorithm as a coherent set of codes that follow stable rules. Instead, I'm asking you to imagine how codes, people, ideas and the environment are always in flux. Who are the best people to make these interpretations? Who are experts? In my work, I found there are a wide range of people who do care about, who care about coding of spoken speech. For example, sonographers, also known as real-time captioners, who transcribe speech for text for deaf and hard of hearing people. In the image here, you can view captioners working with word dictionary to capture the dynamics of social relationships. With training, human sonographers opposed to automated caption can capture local knowledge, regional accent, and can repair broken subtitles in the moment instead of after the facts. It is these range of perspectives and expertise that can enable real-time caption to be reflective of dynamic changes. It's a, kind of like a, a social feedback loop that can't always be captured by algorithm. How sonographers do their work has been a concern for the deaf community and my work too. 
I argue that automated text-to-speech systems should be developed to work with human transcribers, not as their replacement. Creating such systems would need disability-led design. Why? Because we need a diverse range of voices to shape the way we code and approach machine learning. Because disabled people's life experience can contribute to the understanding that the role of machine learning can play in human interaction. The message I want to leave you with today is that algorithm, AI, machine learning cannot always be applied like a rule because the environment and what happens in those environments always changes. We need a diverse range of voices to shape the way that we code and approach machine learning. We need a disability-led design because disabled people are experts in understanding how these environments feel and change. This is what disability-led design tries to do to build on disabled people's own experience to make technological systems that can help them navigate down the street rather than being automatically led down the street. <laughs>